Hi there and welcome to another Code Zonk video here on the Tech Zonk channel. We are going to continue our journey here in Code Combat. Let's see if we are picking up with where we left off last week. You know, we had uh, started to work with some input handling. Uh, we, we focused on that at the end of the video and now we're about to start a new exercise that works on uh, not only arguments, variables, and loops and if statements like we've encountered in the past, but we're also now incorporating input, input handling in with that as well. So let's go ahead and press play and see what we've got to do. So we've still got the um, flag ability in our inventory that we actually picked up in the uh, last video. Let's go ahead and press play and see what we have to do. So we are going to be using flags again to collect all the coins, but this time I suspect we probably have to do a little bit more work on our own to write the code. So it is giving us some hints here. Let's take a look. Just like checking an enemy's type, you can check the position or the POS of a flag. You can find the X and Y coordinates of a flag's uh, position, and it gives us a little bit of a, a sample snippet of code to help us understand how to do that. So you can set a variable to flag using the find flag method, and then you can say the flag's position. That'll give you the full position, or you can specify the X position. You could probably do the same for Y as well. Let's start the level and see what it's expecting us to do. Uh, so as always, it gives us some hints. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at these. We are going to collect all of the coins in each meadow. We're going to use flags to move between meadows. We will press submit when you are ready to place flags. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and start a loop. It's going to set flag to the find flag. If there is a flag, we are going to pick up the flag. So if there is a flag, we will pick it up. So let's see, how do we pick up the flag? I see. We do have a uh, pick up flag, so let's go ahead and say self pick up flag. We need to specify a target, and in this case that target is flag. That's the name of the variable that the flag is set to. We do have an else condition. It says else automatically move to the nearest item you see. So item is self.find nearest item. If the item, so if, if we actually do find an item, then it says, let's go ahead and identify the position. We identify the position by actually setting a variable called position to the item.pos. That is an actual attribute of the object item. We set X to its X point. We set a variable Y to its Y point. Then we move using the move x, y, and we specify those x, y coordinates. So it actually does quite a bit of the work for us, and I suspect the reason it's doing that is because it wants to introduce us to these concepts. So let's go ahead and we'll hit submit and see what we need to do. So I'll hit that submit button. It says three, two, and one. I will go ahead and I will start placing flags. All right, so it sees that flag, so he's gonna head on over there. So he should head on over to everywhere where he actually identifies an item. So he stops, so I place another flag. Let me get another flag ready. Okay, so he doesn't see anything around, so I'll place another flag. That's gonna get him heading over to that flag's position. And from there, he should actually see all of the nearby items. When he doesn't, that's when I place another flag. Okay, so he's able to see most of the things around him here. That's good. Still going. Let me place one flag over here. He'll move to that flag, and from that point, once he gets there, then he'll start checking for other nearby items, and he'll pick them up by himself. Excellent. So we were able to complete that. We had very little code to write, but I think what we're doing here is we're actually getting an understanding of what some of the attributes are on the item object. And that's important, we'll probably be using those in other exercises. Let's go ahead and continue. So we're moving back here. Let's see if we've got some input handling. We do. This is an army of ogres is approaching. We have to use flags to help the defenders. So let's go ahead and press play. It doesn't look like I have anything that I need to equip, so I'll just press the play button and we'll move forward. We have to defeat the ogres. We have a couple of options as well. Our horse needs to survive, so it looks like we've got a horse in this exercise. We'll let this one load. So this one's a, a bit slow to load. I don't know if that means there's a lot going on here or what. So we have to defeat the ogres optionally, lure the ogres into an ambush, but of course make sure that our horse survives. We have to try to lead the ogres into an ambush. So you see here, this is where we are. It's got some arrows here to suggest that there's some uh, 
movement that we need to anticipate. These are the bad guys over here. Let's start the level and we'll see if they give us some hints here in the code. So it says, remember to press submit so you can use flags. Got it. All right, so that means we're not gonna be pressing run. When we're ready to go, we'll be pressing submit. So we're gonna use flags to join the battle or retreat. If you fail, press submit again for new random enemies and try again. You'll want at least 300 health. We have 543, so we're good. Here's what we're gonna do. So we start a loop. We set an enemy to the find nearest enemy. We set a flag to find flag. If there is a flag, we pick up the flag, okay? So let's go ahead and write that code because that is not there. So let's, we'll say pick up flag. We need to specify a target for what we're going to pick up and we do have a variable called flag that represents the closest flag. Then it's gonna say else if the enemy actually does exist, then we need to attack the enemy. So we'll say let's go ahead and attack the nearest enemy that we've identified as the enemy variable. So we need to make sure that we're setting flags. And I, I, I'm not 100% sure where we need to put these flags. I haven't looked too much at the game board. Let's look at it now. We know we are here. The enemies are going to be came, coming in over here. So I think these are all of our friends. I think we probably just need to make sure that we get the enemies over to our little army here. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. So let's see. Let's go back and look at the code. We're looking at the nearest enemy, we're looking for the nearest flag. If we actually see the flag, we pick up the flag. But if we see the enemy, then we fight. Okay, so let's go ahead and press submit. I'm not sure what we have to do here. I am not sure. All right, so right now nothing is happening. Okay, so let's go over here. Okay, I'm not sure what's supposed to happen. Oh, I see. I need to lure the enemies over to my buddies over here. Okay, so let me go back over here. I think when the bad guys see me, that's when they come over to me. Maybe. Oh, I'm now I'm fighting the now I'm fighting the bad guys. All right, well, we did manage to survive. It says that the optional uh, thing of luring the ogres into an ambush, it looks like I was successful, and I think that was at the beginning where I actually got the uh, ogres to uh, go around the uh, area and, and find my team that was waiting for them, and, and they got worked by my team. So I think that's why that, that was successful. Let's go ahead and continue and see if there's something else that faces us before we close this video up. I've got one way up here. It's called Drop the Flag. So we're going to be doing uh, input handling again. I think we're going to be using with uh, using the flags again. Let's go ahead and press play. It does say that it wants me to equip something different. I'm equipping the um, build ability. So we might be either building a fence or building a fire trap. I'm not 100% sure. Let's go ahead and equip it and we'll press play and see what we have to do. Looks like we are collecting coins in this one. So let's see what it says. We have to defeat all the ogres with traps. Okay, so we're building traps. We have to collect all the coins. So we'll read our hints down here. It says, before using pickup flag, you would use build XY to build a fire trap at the flag's position. Okay. So we're going to be, when we hit submit, we're going to be putting down flags in the areas where we want to build a fire trap. A coin is like a flag. It has a, it has a position, so, it has, so it's got uh, similar properties as the item. Uh, we're going to use the coins position to move X, Y to collect them. Okay, I think that makes a lot of sense. Let's go ahead and press that start button and we'll get started. So, of course, we do have some hints that they want to point out to us here in the code window here with this yellow arrow. Let's go ahead and read and see what we've got to do. We need to put flags where you want to build traps. When you're not building traps, pick up coins. Got it. So, that's why we start the loop. Well, the first thing that we do is we set a flag variable to find flag. And if there is a flag, it says, how do we get flag X and flag Y from the flag's position. So we've done that before. We know that we can set X equal to flag dot POS dot X. We can set Y equal to flag dot POS. POS, of course, that represents the position attribute on the flag. And that attribute itself has its own attributes of X and Y. 
So we can set the X and Y to that value. So it says, how do we get the flag X and flag Y from the flag's position? Ah, I see what they're doing. So if you look down here on line 13, it wants variables of flag X and flag Y. So what I'm doing is I'm setting X and Y. What we'll do is we'll just change that to flag X. And we'll set the other one to flag Y. Now does that match the, the casing of these variables it's looking for? It does. So what we've done is we've set flag X and flag Y. So now we've got the coordinates. So what we do here on line 12 is we say, let's go ahead and build a fire trap on those X and Y coordinates. Then we pick up the flag. Else, we identify an item by using find nearest item. And if the item actually exists, we get its position, we get its X and Y coordinates, and we move to that position. So that is very straightforward. Now, interestingly, once we write this code, we have to submit, and then we have to watch what's going on in the, in the game window, and we have to interact by dropping the flags, and we have to do so strategically to make sure that we are building fire traps where we need to when we're not picking up coins. So let's go ahead and press submit and see what we have to do. So I will make sure I get my flag ready. Okay, I'm looking for some bad guys. I don't see any bad guys. Here comes one. Build that fire trap really quick. Uh oh, here comes another one. Gotta hurry up and build that thing. All right, so, so far so good. Gotta get, oh, get back down there quick and build that thing before I'm dead. All right, I'm good. Oh, get away, I'm gonna die. Here comes another bad guy, build that right there. The bad guy up here, I gotta build one up here. Oh crap. Uh oh. Oh, I died. Okay, so that was my fault. That was bad, uh, bad uh, placement of the flags. So uh, let's go ahead and try that one again. Let's see if I can get it a little bit, a little bit better on the money this time around. Let me get my flag ready. All right, so let's go ahead and build first here. And really, let's see. All right, let me build another one right here. All right. All right, here he's coming again. Let me build right here. Okay, I think I'm wrecking these guys a little bit better this time around. Get up there, man. Build that fire trap for me. Okay, I think I'm doing okay this time. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Of course. Get out of there, man. What are you doing? Whoa, I don't know what that was out of... Uh, it says I... Okay, so I collected all the coins, but I ran out of time. So, does that mean I lost? It's hard to say. But it didn't quite go as planned. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to close off the video at that point, and, uh, and what we'll do is we'll pick it up the next time. So obviously, uh, you know, my flag placement isn't uh, super ideal there at the end, I kind of blew it. But uh, you get the idea, I think ultimately you want to make sure that you're writing the code the way that I did. I think the code was spot on, I think my flag placement was probably a little bit off. So I'll see if I can uh, spend a little bit of time off camera getting that one right. In the meantime, I'll be uh, ready to take on some more in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see all of you in the next one.